Happy New Year and welcome to Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. Since 1961, 235,000 Americans have served as volunteers overseas through the United States government program Peace Corps. More than 140 countries have hosted these volunteers, with Timor-Leste currently being one of them. Since the program started, more than 170 volunteers have helped the rural communities in different parts of Timor-Leste. Dr. Olsen, thank you very much for giving us your time to do this interview. It is a great pleasure to have you on the program. Let's begin by talking about your visit. I understand that this is your first visit to Timor-Leste. So could you please tell us a little bit about your visit and what do you expect to, uh, to achieve from this visit? I'm so delighted to be here. And I'm gonna go back in time just a little bit because when I was with Peace Corps Washington several years ago, in the early 2000s, we were invited to be part of Timor-Leste. And I got to hear wonderful things about the country, about the people. And so when we were able to return six years ago to Timor-Leste, I always held it in my mind. I want to come. I want to see it because I've heard about it from afar. So this whole last year, I'm thinking, when can I come? And so we have this chance for me to be here because we're celebrating 10 years of Peace Corps volunteers in Timor-Leste. We were here for four years earlier in 2000, and then we have been here for six years now. And Everyone here has been so gracious and so kind and so good and so welcoming. It's important for me to be here to say to the leadership here in Timor-Leste to say thank you because this is a partnership and I want to share how proud we are to be able to be here as the guests of this country and the guests of the community, and the guests of family, and guests of schools. So my main purpose for being here is to share that, to say thank you, and also to see what Peace Corps volunteers are doing. I will be able to spend a day visiting volunteers, uh, meeting them in schools, meeting them in communities, meeting them with host families, to understand what this great hospitality is about. So this week that I'm here has been something I've been looking forward to for a long time. And I feel very lucky and very honored to be here to say thank you. Thank you to the officials here that have welcomed us, Peace Corps, into this wonderful nation. I'm sure there will be a lot to talk about, uh, about the work of uh, Peace Corps in Timor-Leste. But before that, if you don't mind, could you please Take us back to your background, your history, uh, the work and the experience, uh, your life experience, your education that has finally brought you to Peace Corps. Uh, let me begin with my own story because it will be a tip-off as to volunteers making a decision to do this work. But I was a junior in college many, many years ago in uh, Utah, the state of Utah, and I heard about Peace Corps. And actually, it was about 50 years ago, a very long time. And I thought to myself, what an interesting opportunity to go volunteer in another country. And at that point, there were not very many Americans that went to other countries. And so it was this intrigue of what is it? What might happen? I went to Tunisia, North Africa. And in Tunisia, North Africa, I taught English and I worked with maternal health, learned French and learned colloquial Arabic so that I could become part of that community. And during that two years for me, when I was young, very young, I learned how to give myself away as a person because I couldn't still wanna eat all the things that I like to eat in the United States because they weren't there to eat. So I needed to understand 
how to cook Tunisian food, how to be part of Tunisia life, how to talk with women around the, uh, around the kitchen and at the wells, and to play with the children, and to learn a whole different way of thinking and being. To do that, I worked very hard to listen, to observe, to be present so that I could absorb and then give back in a way that brought me into that community. And those two years for me completely changed my life. I didn't realize that they were going to change my life. I mean, I went back to the United States and went on with having a family and uh, going to graduate school and becoming an academic and then working in international development. But I discovered that Tunisia changed me and gave me a sense of how to hear, how to observe, how to recognize people that were different, how to build teams, how to be present in an unusual space where some people would get nervous. And I hopefully was able to take that into the work that I did back in the United States. But I say that because today, 50 years later, we have 7,000 Peace Corps volunteers in 61 countries around the world. But they make the same decisions, and they make those same decisions for the same reasons. To be part of something that's very different so even though we give, and I taught English, but I really got more than I gave. I learned so much from those students and learned from the women as they talked about having children and how important children were in their culture. So volunteers that serve today around the world and including here in Timor-Leste, they're making those same discoveries that I made when I was a Peace Corps volunteer over 50 years ago. Now for my own trajectory forward, I, that was, experience was so profound for me that I went into working internationally in many different jobs because I always wanted to be able to share cults, cultures and learn cultures. For example, for five years, I ran the Fulbright senior scholar program around the world. And I know that the Fulbright program is here in Timor-Leste. But I was very interested in how Fulbright faculty from universities would come to the United States and American faculty would go to universities around the world. And that all came from my being a Peace Corps volunteer. So for the volunteers here in Timor-Leste, you're shaping us. You're shaping us Americans for how we give back for the rest of our life. I understand that you, you are also posted in a number of different countries and different regions. Yes. Would you please share, as, share with us some experiences that you got from those countries as well? Uh, they must have had so many differences. Um, can you share with us some of those stories? Well, just for example, we are in on the African continent. And in fact, almost half of the Peace Corps volunteers are on the African continent. We're in Central America and Latin America. We are in Europe. We're in Asia. And uh, we're in the Pacific Islands. And just to give a couple of examples, I was in Togo for two years as Peace Corps country director. And so we were learning what the village chief culture is and how when you went into a village, you always started with the village chief and the ceremony with the village chief. And then he would introduce us into that community. So I, as an official, would always sit with the village chief and the Peace Corps volunteers always sat with the village chief. I was acting uh, Peace Corps country director in Kazakhstan about 15 years ago. And I think about the experience in Kazakhstan could not be more different than the experience in Togo. The Kazakhstan was part of the Silk Road, 
and Kazakhstan gets very cold. And Kazakhstan has a different way of being in a community, in part because it's cold many months out of the year. And so families bring outsiders, Peace Corps volunteers, into the family, but you're more inside the house and inside the school rather than outside, which you are in Togo, because Togo's warmer. So you learn that these cultures are very different based on agriculture, based on weather, uh, based on years of tradition and history. And so each Peace Corps volunteer gets a whole different experience. I mean, in Thailand, all the ways of the ceremonies and their ceremonies vis-a-vis -vis the temples, similar to a Peace Corps volunteer in Nepal, of knowing how to go with the family to the temple ceremony which is a very different experience than you get in Latin America. So we, we learn so many different cultures, but the importance is that in each country where we serve, we become part of that culture. So we don't, for volunteers going to Ecuador or to Thailand or to Fiji, each one of those has a different experience and we teach them differently than the volunteers coming here to, East, uh, to Timor Leste because we want to be part of whom we are here and that's very different than who we are in South Africa or in Ecuador and it's that discovery when we do our trainings because we, every volunteer coming to a country trains for about 10 weeks. And in those 10 weeks, we learn the language, we learn the food, we learn what the teaching system is here, we learn what the community system is here, and we live with a host family so we can learn the daily life. This is even before we go out to the community. But we need to understand it for here. But we know that we need to go through that process to understand it for here. So the excitement for Peace Corps, when you go to Peace Corps Washington and you go into our offices, you see hangings from Timor-Leste, you see hangings from South Africa, you see hangings from Thailand, and you see the tapa cloth from Fiji. And it is all the ways that we represent our differentness even as we are all Peace Corps volunteers together around the world. How do you find all these volunteers? Um, how does Peace Corps work? Does the Washington office figure out how to find the volunteers? How does it work? Well, we uh, reach out, but most importantly, because most of the volunteers are recently out of college. So about 90% of our Peace Corps volunteers are under the age of about 27. So most of our volunteers have had have a bachelor's degree, once in a while a master's degree, and maybe two or three years of work experience. So we begin the process in colleges in when they're freshmen or sophomore, and we ask them and tell stories about what this Peace Corps experience is. And we talk to them about what it teaches them that they give, but they also learn that will help them in their professional career after they return. And we get many, we get about 18,000 young Americans and older Americans that come apply to Peace Corps every year and about 4,500 go overseas every year. But it's introducing the idea, and like with me, it's, oh my heavens, is there an opportunity to go to Timor-Leste? And then they say, wait a minute, where is it? Can I find it on the map? And then they get excited about it, and then they, and then they come. But often, uh, we have people who have been Peace Corps volunteers talk to the next generation and get them excited about having this experience. Having people in 
61 different countries and working, understanding how people from those countries work and live their, their lifestyle. And is that, how, does that have an influence on how Peace Corps works? Um, the, policies, the policies of Peace, yes. Peace Corps, for instance. Yeah. Uh, for example, for us to be able to be in a country for two years, to be in a community, to be part of that community, we have to have policies around the world that where we can ensure that they will stay healthy and they will stay safe. And so we have an office in each of our countries and that office does several things. One, it has a medical unit that helps with volunteers if they get sick to you know, work within the country also for medical help, but that we are there to do a lot of prevention to help them stay healthy. Second, we want to make sure that they stay safe. And so it's making sure that they ride the public transportation safely and that they don't stay out too late at night and they don't do things that might put them at risk. So, and we teach them all of this, but we have a staff person who pays attention to that. Then third, we have staff people who work with them on the programs they're going to be doing. For example, we have volunteers here who are working in the education system and uh, teaching English and doing curriculum development. Well, we have a staff person in our office who is from Timor who works with the schools, works with the ministry to say what is the best way that we can develop this program for the volunteer and the counterpart to work together on English. We also then have a staff person who looks at communities and wants to make sure that the community is ready to welcome a Peace Corps volunteer and that there's a host family that's happy to welcome a Peace Corps volunteer. So these are Peace Corps policies that we've learned over the years. And so we have staff that help with this in every single country. Now again, we do it in a way that works for Timor-Leste. But we know that here, you know, in addition to Fiji and Thailand and Mongolia, that there's a person who looks at programming, a person who looks at medical, a person who looks at safety, and a person who is ensuring that the community is welcoming for the volunteer. And that is what I think has really helped make Peace Corps successful through all these years, through these 58 years that Peace Corps has been part of the global community. Um. How do you work with, with, with the government, uh, through the embassies, for instance? How, how is that working together work? We, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, Peace Corps is itself a government agency. So we're a government agency, but we're independent of the State Department. So we're not part of the State Department. So officially, we're not part of the embassy. We are our own entity because we're people to people. You know, we're about the volunteer coming in. So there's several elements to that. First, we only go to countries where we're invited. And so one of the reasons why I'm excited to be here is to say thank you to the government of Timor-Leste for inviting Peace Corps. And so when the government invites us, we then work with the government to say, what are the things that we can do that are integrated into your own development strategies? So we do different things in different countries based on what the countries would like us to do. So here in Timor-Leste, we're working on community economic development and we're working on English and education because this is what the government is saying this is how we would like to be helped. So this is how we come into a country and are part of a country. We write a memorandum of understanding so that we have an agreement of what we are going to do. And each of our volunteers has a counterpart 
to make sure that we're facilitating change and that we're collaborating all the way through the process. Now, the embassies are very important and because the ambassador is often a very close friend of Peace Corps and the staff at embassies are also very close friends of Peace Corps and in fact sometimes ambassadors and staff are former Peace Corps volunteers. And so we always have very good relationships with the embassy, but we function separately because our primary partner is the government and is the, here the government of Timor-Leste. Dr. Olsen, something that was very interesting about working with people in 61 countries, over 7,000 uh, volunteers, what's Something that is very in interesting is the fact that, that you have all these 61 countries with volunteers from, from the states. What kind of feedback, what kind of opinion do the volunteers have in the whole system or in the whole policy, uh, if I could say that, of Peace Corps? How do their opinions or how do their do they voice their views on how this should work in, in, in these countries? Oh, I appreciate the question. The, we actually have a questionnaire that goes out once a year. And it goes out electronically to 61 countries. And I'm always marvel that we're all over the world and we send out this questionnaire. And we ask the volunteers a lot of questions about their experience because their opinions are really important. Are they feeling safe? Are they integrated into the community? Do they feel that they're making a difference? What are they learning? These types of questions help us shape the policies for the next groups of volunteers. For example, if we hear from volunteers in a particular country that say that when they went to their sites their language was a little weak their you know the host language that tells us for the next year we need to push language learning uh, a little more if we hear from volunteers that they're sort of out and about and not in their communities a lot we know that we need to help uh, everybody rethink the importance of staying in the community and being part of community life. So these, this annual questionnaire gives us our framework for how we support in the next year our Peace Corps program. We also ask our counterparts how they're doing and their perspectives on the volunteers, their perspective on the programs because we need to hear from you. We need to hear from our host country counterparts to make sure that we're giving them the support that they need, one, to work productively on the project, but also for them to know that they're providing support to the volunteers in the right way. Are they uh, feeling that, uh, you know, again, the volunteer's language isn't quite good enough, or? the volunteer needs a little bit more technical training, they tell us, and then we go and provide more uh, support as we're needed. So we do get feedback, both from counterparts and from volunteers, and it's very important to us because no two years are the same, and countries change, volunteers change, projects change, and that annual feedback helps us grow and shift as, uh, as countries and communities change. I mean, teaching English here this year is very different, I'm sure, from what it will be five years from now. And it's the volunteers that tell us and their counterparts, oh, well, tweak this or do that with the program to make it easier or make it where we are as the Ministry of Education you know, changes its policies. So we always evolve, even as we're always there in the community as part of that community life. And if I may focus a little bit on Asia, what are the priority projects or programs of Peace Corps in Asia? The, uh, in Asia in particular, 
We uh, focus on education, as we are doing here. And often that is English and curriculum development and co-teaching because many Asian countries are eager to strengthen their English program. For example, Mongolia is particularly eager to bring in as many volunteers as possible to really build a, a strong English program. And we've had many conversations with them about strengthening the English program. We also work in community economic uh, enterprise, as we are here in Timor-Leste, because it's an opportunity for women and men and youth, but particularly women, to learn more about how to, let's say, uh, can vegetables and then sell vegetables, how to uh, sell products in the market, some of the ways that your produce or your, you know, if you're weaving something, how to strengthen what that, what the cooperativeness is of, uh, of selling those products. So that's also a very important program here in, among the Asian countries. Health, which we're not doing here in Timor-Leste, we uh, work in uh, several different health programs and these often are related to maternal health and to HIV. So those are three. I might add agriculture uh, for some of the countries and it's strengthening, again, partnering with the farmers in what they're growing, what they're harvesting, and how do we help facilitate them, let's say, doing that better through what is culturally appropriate and environmentally appropriate and then how do you combine that with some of the economic opportunities to sell their products. So these are the primary programs in Asian countries. And with determining who goes where and uh, mm -hmm. who is doing what, how do you, how do you decide um, with the volunteers, do they have to have certain uh, education backgrounds in, in a particular uh, area that they, they would be working on. How, how, how does it work? Well, um, for example, for Timor-Leste, for those, well, let me back up. When an uh, applicant looks at the Peace Corps site and says, I want to go into the Peace Corps, they look through what all the choices are all over the world. And they look at countries and they look at what we call sectors. So that's whether it's agriculture, education, whatever. And they think, aha, I would like to. And sometimes they say, I would like to go anywhere in the world. Or they might say, I would like to go to Asia. Or they might say, I would like to go to Timor-Leste. And they can choose specifically the country or the region or the world. Second, they can choose the sector. And so they might have a degree in agriculture and they look at where in the world there are agriculture programs. And so they might say, I'll go anywhere as long as it's in agriculture. So they're looking at from an expertise as well as from a country where to go. And then we work with them in matching the possibilities. Now, when we work with the country ministry, and let's say for uh, education, the government might say, we really would prefer volunteers who either have a degree in education or have informally taught and have tutored or taught English as a second language so that when they come, they have enough experience to obviously learn how to do it in Timor-Leste, but that they already have, they're already anchored in that topic. So often, our Peace Corps volunteers have degrees in the subject area in which they're involved. Those who are working in health often have a health degree or a public health degree. 
if they're working in agriculture, they often have an agriculture degree or an environment degree. So we try to make sure that their degrees are close to the kind of work that they're going to be doing. And how involved or how much involvement uh, do you have from the governments where in the countries where your volunteers are uh, deployed to? Oh, we have a lot of involvement with the governments. That's what's fun because we uh, meet regularly with the ministries and we talk through with the ministry, for example, we're going to have uh, you know 20 new trainees coming that are going to be in education because you would like to have 20 volunteers in education. And as we meet with the ministry, it's like, well, where should they go? What is best? Um, what kind of uh, education program is most comfortable for you? So we have those conversations back and forth so that the ministry is totally up to speed and knows who's coming and knows where the volunteers are going. And we feel it is a, it is a partnership, a complete partnership. And so sometimes ministry officials, officials go out and see the volunteers or the regional ministry officials go visit the volunteers. And we, we want to make sure that we're always doing back and forth on a regular basis because it's important that we're meeting the needs and that we're doing it well and our volunteers are being the best people that they can be. And how do you communicate with these 61 countries? <laughs> oh, you're based in the States yes. and you have people in these 61 How do you communicate with them? Well, we uh, make sure that we've got effective communication. And so we uh, communicate mostly by email or we uh, are communicating with WhatsApp or we're communicating, we're communicating with all the ways that people have managed to figure out how to communicate around the world. We do have uh, email addresses that link each of our posts to Washington so that we can email our uh, country director here, for example, when we're talking about policies or things that need to change. But the Peace Corps volunteers don't have that access because they're volunteers. And so we often do our communication with the Peace Corps volunteers with apps and some email and, you know, the ways that we, we all communicate. How much do you hear from Timor-Leste? Well, the good news is that what we hear from Timor-Leste is all good. Uh, and I, so our regional manager in Washington hears a lot from Timor-Leste. I don't hear much in the sense that that's really good because countries that I hear from often are countries where there's a problem. And so to have stories that we post on Facebook about a volunteer who's having a good experience in Timor-Leste, that's, that's what we get very excited about. And Timor-Leste is an excellent partnership with us. And the news we get from Timor-Leste is good. Volunteers are very happy to be here. And we feel very proud of this partnership that we have. As, as the director, what is your overall role uh, in the whole system of Peace Corps? Oh my, <laughs> let me think about what my role is. Uh, one, my role is to share my excitement about Peace Corps around the world. So I share it in countries by being able to go to the countries and to be able to say to the leadership, thank you. Because I know that the countries give a lot in order for us to be partners in those countries. So that's a very exciting part of my job, which is why I'm here this week. And again, celebrating the 10th anniversary of 10 years of Peace Corps in Timor-Leste. Uh, I also go around the United States and talk about the importance of Peace Corps. And uh, with that, we're recruiting volunteers. We are also talking to universities and local officials about what return volunteers give back. 
And then, obviously, I spent some time in Washington where uh, you're making decisions and setting policies and thinking about new countries and supervising a very large staff. And I love it. And um, how often do you visit countries uh, to see their work, to see directly what is I, happening? In I probably go to five or six different countries a year. And so on this particular trip, I spent a week in uh, Indonesia. And now I'm spending five days here in Timor-Leste that my previous trip Two and a half months ago, I was in Uganda and in Rwanda. And then on another trip, I was in Senegal. And on another trip, I was in Sierra Leone. And on another trip, I was in Ecuador and in Paraguay. So as you see, I, uh, it, it depends on what the opportunity is. There might be a conference, and then I see volunteers. Uh, it might be celebrating 25 years or 10 years or 50 years of a program. Uh, it might be swearing in a new group of volunteers, which we're also doing here uh, in three days. We'll be swearing in a whole new group of Peace Corps volunteers uh, here in Timor-Leste. So these are the opportunities, and it is the favorite part of my job because I love seeing how we become partners and how we learn to be the best we can be in countries, and countries learn a little bit more about us as Americans. And let me add one piece that I hadn't mentioned up till now, that the Peace Corps volunteers, after they finish two years of work here, they do go home, back to the United States. But they take part of Timor-Leste with them. Uh, they take the language, they take the food, they take the culture, and because of today's communication, they stay in touch. So as their host family is having another baby, they call and send good notes, and then when the Peace Corps volunteers uh, get married, they send a note back to their host family saying, look what's happening to me. And so we become family for years after that Peace Corps experience. So we keep sharing each other for many years. Apart from the governments, um, do you have other partners and who are they? Oh, our partners? Yes. Well, uh, most importantly, our partners are the ministries within the government. Uh, we also have partners with uh, USAID, which is uh, obviously an important program here. And we are beginning to work with the Millennium uh, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, which is yet another American uh, official government program here. But we also partner with, informally, with the uh, Korean program, volunteer program, with the Japanese volunteer program, with the Australian volunteer program. And again, this is more informal. But we also partner with, let's say, Catholic Relief Service, which is an international organization, or other types of nonprofit organizations that are doing work. And our opportunity to partner is important because we are often the people part. We're the part that is that individual in the community. So uh, Catholic Relief Service might have a project for women's health. I'm not sure whether there's one here in women's health, but let's say, for example, they have a project in women's health. And so they would give project monies. Well, we as the Peace Corps volunteer would be there working with the community on that project. And so it's very easy for us to partner with other organizations because we're often the persons who stay in the community for two years with the language to help make that project successful. Thank you very much. It has been very exciting. Uh, I have been, uh, I have enjoyed the, the conversation. Uh, good luck with uh, everything that you will be doing throughout your visit. And 
again, thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a great joy. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jodie Olsen has told us about her work. We will now hear from some of the people who have dedicated their time, energy, and skills to help develop Timor-Leste through their work as Peace Corps volunteers. Tell us about what you do in Timor-Leste. Well, I am a community economic development volunteer. I'm based in the Baokao region. Uh, I work with a local NGO primarily doing work uh, for facilitation. So uh, other programs, projects, people come to us to um, share their ideas or create a project or instate something. And my job is to help as a member of the community uh, with the knowledge of the culture and the language that I have, help facilitate their um, ability to get their projects off the ground. And for Often these organizations are here for a short time and we are here for two years. Our service is uh, typically two years and so um, after the program is instated, I help to carry it out for long, long terms. What do, do we find exciting about working in uh, Timor Leste? I, I think perspective is amazing. I, I think it's the ability to come here and learn, um, participate in culture and the ability to learn and speak the language. Uh, my only other language is English, so uh, it's very special to, to speak Tatoon um, and also engage with my community with um, addressing their needs and um, just helping, being able to help. Apart from uh, learning Tatoon, what else have you been able to learn throughout the period of your, um, your time in Timor? I, I think the focus on values, um, the community aspect, how closely knit uh, the communities are in Timor-Leste with families um, and also with regard to work and the priority that um, and the pride that Timor-Leste takes um, in its independence and its ability to build a strong um, a strong country sustainable sustainably. How did you find out about Peace Corps and what brought you to Peace Corps? My grandparents both served in the Peace Corps um, in Moldova and so that was sort of they always told me stories of their service and going through my life I've been very fortunate to have a, a fortunate upbringing and I think that it is important to bring those aspects and traits to um, perhaps areas that could use my perspective um, and, and my just being fortunate to come and, and participate in things like this. Um, so right out of college, I sent an application uh, to Timor-Leste specifically because um, it is a, a country that I know very little about, knew very little about prior to coming here. And I think that um, a lot of my friends, family and colleagues feel the same way. So I wanted the opportunity to come to a country that I knew little about, learn about its culture, and then be able to bring that back to the United States to share and teach people about Timor-Leste. And how much support do you get from Peace Corps while you're working in Timor-Leste? All, all the support I could ever ask for. Um, I think that T Peace Corps does a really good job um, in the first two and a half months we're here uh, doing a, a very rigorous training. So they prepare us very well before going to our permanent sites to um, deal with the challenges of daily life. So I think it is rare that we really need direct support from um, our administrators, but we are very, we feel very comfortable to reach out if uh, a, a situation arises that we think we need um, insight from. And a lot of that comes from uh, the Team Marie staff who uh, really help us out with those things. Um, in particular to, to Timor-Leste, do you think Peace Corps is doing what it's supposed to be doing? And also, if there's anything you could suggest, what would it be? That's a really good question. <laughs> I, think, I think Peace Corps is, is doing, in terms of the providing qualified men and women to serve here, to help in whatever way we can, but also in the, it, it, the way, again, like I said, with the training that we are provided, 
our ability to um, build very, very strong relationships with our communities and to then share some American culture, to learn the Team Reese culture, and to be able to bring that back to America. I think it's doing, uh, I think it's a wonderful project and I think that Peace Corps is doing a good, good work. On an average day in Baucau, what do you do? How do you work with the, with the local staff in Baucau? So, it's, my schedule is, is relatively similar to a work day might be in the, in the United States. I um, go to work at 8 a.m. and I'm there until 5 p.m. We, uh, I work in an office, I have an office setting and I have staff that I report to. Um, so my average day in Baucau is spent at, in, the, uh, in the office at, at my org. Um, on the weekends, I like to, uh, I live with a host family, so we spend a lot of time together, um, playing, teaching, learning, um, and then the odd, the odd cultural event, you know, uh, the casamentos and, and things like that um, are, are very fun to participate in. Uh, just a very quick question to end. Um, I understand that this year is a special year for Peace Corps in Timor-Leste, and what, what is that? This happens to be the 10th anniversary of Peace Corps' involvement in Timor-Leste. Um, I think I can speak on behalf of uh, all volunteers that have served here and will continue to serve here that it is an honor to come and, and be a part of the um, ever-growing uh, pride and, and development of Timor-Leste and it's, it's really special to be here. Tell us what you do and um, what's your average day? Um, so I'm an English education volunteer in Ileo. So my average day would be waking up, having coffee and breakfast with my host family, and then walking to school. Uh, my host dad's also a teacher, so sometimes we walk to school together. Um, at school, I, together with my Timorese counterpart, we teach English to middle and high school students. Um, so in the morning, I'll go to the middle school and teach to either seventh, eighth, or ninth grade, and then go back home for lunch, and then in the afternoon we'll teach to high school for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. How do you find the, the Timorese students? How, do, how fast do they learn? The Timorese students are great. They're very eager to learn, especially English, um, and they pick things up really fast. They're always willing to try new, fun, and engaging things in the classroom, and um, I really enjoy teaching them. Um, what challenges do you face in doing your work in ILEO? Um, so I would say that maybe just the weather sometimes, the rain. <laughs> this year not so much rain yet, but sometimes when it's um, really rainy, it's hard to get to school on time, but that's also taught me patience. Um, everyone, all the teamers people have a ton of patience and I think that by working here, I've been able to adapt um, and grow a lot in that aspect as well. What's the biggest lessons you have been able to learn about working in Timor-Leste? Um, just, I've learned so much about the Timorese culture, especially um, the Timorese people have such a big focus on family, extended family, um, and just very giving. And it's, it's been great because it's, they've welcomed me into their families and um, I've been able to adapt very well. Yeah. And how much support do you get from Dili? From Dili, from the Peace from Corps? Dili, for the Peace, from the Peace Corps office in Dili. Yeah. Um, Any time that I need support, they're always willing to help and they're always here. I feel very comfortable going to them whenever I would need support, um, but mostly I find my support at site from my community members and my host family and even my students, they are the ones that provide me with the most support, I would say, here. And uh, if you could say something about Timor, um, what's best about Timor that you, you have found since you came here? It's definitely the how accepting people are, willing to accept me into their families, into the school, um, how excited they are to include me in festas and cultural events. Um, just their whole entire uh, way of accepting. And also the coffee is pretty great. And um, how did you end up getting involved in, uh, in Peace Corps? 
Um, so I learned about Peace Corps when I was in university, and it was always something that I wanted to do. Um, I worked for a few years after I graduated, and then I was ready for a new experience. Um, I wanted to be able to work together in a new way, in a, in a new country, um, to help achieve something good. And this year is the 10th anniversary of uh, Peace Corps volunteers in Timor-Leste. Yeah. Uh, if you had a message to say, what would that be? Um, just that I think I can speak for all the volunteers that um, we're really happy to be here and we're so glad that um, Timor-Leste invited us into their country to come and work together with the people to support what's needed. From the interviews, I have been able to learn a lot about Dr. Jody and her work, about the volunteers, and most importantly, about Peace Corps. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed the program. I'm Francis Suni, and I will see you in the next episode of Diplomata. Bye for now.